Okay, so now you should have all of your pieces um, dotted and marked uh, from tracing them on the duty and draping them. Your next step is that you're actually going to cut out these pieces along the dotted line so that you have all of these pieces cut out and transferred ready to trace onto paper. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. You wanna be careful when you're cutting out the piece that you include part of your grain line within the piece. Otherwise, if you lose your grain line, you won't be able to know where your grain line was on your fabric. So make sure that if your grain line ends up outside of your piece that you retrace it so it's parallel with your grain line that you drew, but inside your piece so that you don't lose it. So go ahead and start cutting it out. The other thing you want to be uh, aware of is that if you don't want to cut it out right on those dots so that you have these cut shape pieces, you can actually take these pieces and transfer them onto paper using a pokey wheel um, by pinning your piece of fabric on top of a piece of paper on top of a spongy table and pin through your fabric on top of the piece of paper and then pokey wheel around it, including the grain line. That way you're going straight from your fabric to your paper without having to actually cut out the shape. I don't have a table that I can pin into, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out these shapes and then I'm ready to start tracing them onto paper. Okay, so when you are tracing your pieces out onto paper, one thing that you wanna make sure that you do is indicate your grain line. You also wanna leave a good amount of space on either side of the paper um, or the piece when you cut out the piece of paper so that you can walk all your pattern pieces and make sure that they all match. Now, how I like to do it to make my life a lot easier is I actually trace all of my pieces on tracing paper so that it's semi-transparent. So for example, I've got this piece, it's number five. So this is my number five here. And I've traced it out onto my piece of paper. And what I've done is I've traced that orientation arrow on there. I've indicated where my center back is because it's my fifth piece and my center back. I also have transferred my grain line and I've given it a name. I've called it my center back panel. Now the other thing that I've done, and I'll lay it on top of here to show you, is that when I first traced out this piece, I noticed that my center back was curved in and I actually had a little bit of space here when I drew a straight line in for my center back. So when you're drawing in a straight line for your center back, if you're finding that it's curved, what you can do is you can actually trace that center back line in straight, take the amount that it's curved in here and shave it off the opposite side like I did here. So if you can see here, I've shaved off that amount that I've straightened out my center back and I've taken it off of that side over here. Now what that does is it makes it so that it still fits tightly as it did on the Judy when I draped it, but it makes my center back straight and it actually adds a little extra curve to my panel that connects to piece number four. And what that'll do is shape my body a little bit more hourglassy, which is really nice uh, when we're talking about corsets and wanting to get that nice fit. Now, in terms of why the tracing paper is a great idea. So here's my center back panel, it's number five, and let me find piece number four. So here's piece number four, and it's oriented the way that it should be, and I'm butting it up next to piece number five here. Now what I wanna do is take piece number four and take piece number five and lay those panels on top of each other so that I can see here how that seam is matching up. So I can actually lay it upside down and that seam should walk. Now if it doesn't, you have to do a little truing. You might have to add a little bit to make those lines match and subtract from the other side. Whatever it takes to get that curve to match almost perfectly. And what you also wanna do is start adding notches so that when you have your pattern traced out, you have notches to match your pieces to. So you can do that with a pokey wheel so that it transfers through both, or if you're using tracing paper, you can actually add it to one side, flip it and add it to the other. So for piece number four, I'm gonna put a notch at the top and a notch at the bottom, and then I'm gonna flip it over so that I'm on my other piece of paper, and I'm going to transfer that notch so that there's a notch at the top and the bottom that match. Now when I flip them right side out, and I've got both pieces next to each other, I have walking notches on each of my seams. Now because these two pieces match pretty perfectly, I can go ahead and add my seam allowance to each pattern piece. I wanna add 5 eighths of an inch 
to every vertical seam and an inch to the top and the bottom, just like we did before. On the seams that have pieces like gussets and cups, you're gonna add 5 eighths of an inch there as well. So go ahead and add that. And then when you're done that, you'll have your finished pattern pieces. Okay, so at this point, you have all of your pattern pieces cut out and you've walked all of your edges together to make sure that everything lines up. You've trued any edges that don't match. That means that you've leveled them, you've smoothed your curves, and you've made sure that all of your seams when sewn together will walk. You've also added notches so that when you sew them together they match and so that when you see them flat basted you know which pieces match to which. And you've also given yourself some guidelines for orientation. So upwards facing arrows for pieces that are facing up, numbers for the pieces, as well as grain lines so that you're aware of which way these pieces go. Once you have all of these pieces cut out of paper, you're adding 5 8 seam allowance to every seam that's vertical as well as for your cups and for your hip gussets, and 1 inch seam allowance for all of your top edges and bottom edges of all your pieces. Once you have done that, you are ready to start cutting out your muslin to make a mock-up. We're going to wait until the next demo to do the mock-up because at this point this should have taken you quite a while. Do not uh, rush through doing the pattern pieces. You want to make sure that everything matches up perfectly. It'll save you so much time in the long run if you don't have to go back and change or um, redo any of your pattern pieces. You want to make sure that everything is ready to go and ready to sew. Alrighty, so good luck and enjoy pattern drafting um, and draping your corset pieces.